Dictation has long been the best way for authors to be super productive in their writing, at least before AI came around. And for authors who want to write all of their first drafts themselves, it's still the best way to write. And I tried Dictation for a while, and I still use Dictation from time to time. But there have historically been a number of huge problems with it. The biggest one, probably, is that you have to speak in what we call Dragonese, which is named after Dragon Dictation, the primary software that we've been using for Dictation in the past. Dragonese means you're just really repeating the grammar as you go. So you have to actually speak the grammar and punctuation as you are dictating the whole thing. And that takes a lot of getting used to. So you would say things like, open quote, what did you have in mind? Question mark, close quote, said Jack, period, new line. Open quote, I thought you knew, comma, close quote, said Jill, period. See, even then it took me a little bit out of my head to speak it all. Plus, dictation in the past was notoriously inaccurate. And even if you got down to like 97% accuracy, the amount of time it took to carefully read through and correct all of the grammar and spelling mistakes took a while. In fact, I estimate that it took about as long to edit dictated text as it did to dictate the text in the first place. So while it did take some time out of the process and allowed for a more seamless form of writing, it did take a lot more time. And usually when it got to the proofreading phase, my proofreader was a little upset with me because even with all the editing that I did, the proofreader was still able to find a ton of different issues. But now that has actually changed. Not too long ago, OpenAI released their Whisper model which was already on its own way better than Dragon Dictation was for the accuracy of the dictation transcription. But now there's a new tool that's not only more accurate than Whisper and using models that are more accurate than Whisper, but it will actually edit the text as you go so that you have virtually no mistakes unless you intentionally created them. And it doesn't require that you speak in that kind of Dragonese, although you can do that Dragonese if you feel so inclined, if you want to be more precise in what your grammar should be and like where you separate paragraphs and stuff like that. But on the whole, it's not going to require any editing at the end. So you save a ton of time, not just in the dictation part of things, but in the editing of the dictated text. So let's walk through this. The program is called Prose Write, and it's not necessarily only for authors, but certainly authors are going to be one of the primary audiences getting the most out of this tool. It's a brand new tool that came out recently and is still kind of in beta. So you can forgive a few things that are a little rough around the edges, like the design, I think could probably use some improvements. But you know, like I said, it's brand new. You're not going to find a lot of tools that are really great when they're brand new, but this does have a lot of real promise. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. I've got three audio files that I've got here. One is where I basically dictated some story beats to use with AI to generate a chapter later. And I dictated those story beats in about five minutes. So we have a five minute audio file. And then I have two others where I read through a piece of text that I already had written. But in the first one, I did it without any grammar or any kind of punctuation advice. And in the second one, I did the Dragonese where I actually said all of the punctuation out loud, like open quote, comma, period, all of these things. And so we're going to test all three and see how well they do. First, we're going to give this a name. We're going to say heirs of Dracula beats for this beat one. So we'll go ahead and hit create. And we got a new project here. First thing you can do is you can add custom words. And we are going to be doing this for the second one because I write fantasy. So this is very useful to have names and places identified ahead of time because the AI transcription, no matter how good the transcription program is, will probably not be able to read your mind about what the spelling of those things is. And so having that is going to be really useful. And then here under persona, this is where the real magic happens inside of prose, right? And what makes prose, right? Unique compared to other dictation programs is this ability to add personas. So we can go ahead and choose a persona. And there are a couple of different things that we can look at. We can look at the minimalist proofreader. This is just, it just does a minimal job. It keeps everything more or less the same. We also have of note here is the note taker. This is what I'm going to use for this specific project because we're talking about scene beats and things like that. So we're not actually creating fiction. You can use the fiction writer, but as I understand it, the editing is sometimes so thorough that it might actually add to your story a little bit. That might be a good thing for some people. It might not be a bad thing for some people. It depends on how bare bones your dictation is. Some people dictate just dialogue and basic scene directions, and then they'll like fix it up later. And then they have things for other types of writers. For instance, if you're a journaler, academic editor, 
editor, marketing copywriter, autobiographer, conference moderator, nonfiction specialist, and a journalism guru. So this will depend on the kind of thing that you're into. Each of these will have a different slant to them depending on the kind of stuff that you are doing. For this one, we're gonna do the note taker and you can actually add any additional preferences that you have here. So do we want it as bullet point formatting, quick reference tagging, mind mapping integration? Like all of these are really cool that you can play around with. Concise summary creation, action item and extraction. So this is great if you're like transcribing a meeting and you wanna look at the kind of notes and action items that people might have, takeaways that you have from that meeting. I don't need most of these, but I am gonna select bullet point formatting here because I think that'll help with the whole idea of scene beats. And you can record right into this or you can choose a file to upload from here. I already have my files, so I'm going to go ahead and upload my scene beats that I created. Again, this is about a five minute transcription that I wrote the entire chapter scene beats in five minutes, which is pretty cool, by the way. It would have probably taken me at least 20 minutes to write those scene beats out by hand. So this already is saving me a ton of time. And we'll just call this chapter three scene beats for this section. And then we'll say create section. And then this usually takes a minute or so to process. And now if I look at this, I can see it's actually broken it up into sections, which could be useful for certain types of note taking. So we have like upon confrontation, the encounter involves Amina's subsequent fall, post encounter reflections, and I kind of split things up. And this actually might be a little too much for what I need in this case. I just need a straight transcription here, but it did do a good job of actually transcribing what I said. The figure is clearly female and exudes an air of menace. As the figure moves away, Mina follows leading to a lengthy chase across the rooftops of London. Eventually Mina loses side of her but rounds a corner springs onto a taller rooftop to get a better look and is immediately pounced upon by the figure and that's all stuff that i said inside of my dictation now i could just go back and transcribe it using the minimal project so what we would do there is i could upload this again but instead of picking the notes persona i'm just going to select the minimalist proofreader and run that instead and to be quite honest i think this minimalist note taker is going to be probably the one that most authors will want to use because it will Will be the most exact and with the least amount of special formatting or anything for you but it depends a lot on your specific use case and so here we have everything sorted into different scene beats and this is pretty good it also split it into paragraphs which is great because i didn't give it any instructions on where to split into paragraphs but i think it's done a good job of splitting it at appropriate areas and each one of these could make some pretty decent scene beats and some of them i might you know i can go through and make sure it's accurate but this definitely is something i would use for scene beats inside of a program like Novel Crafter or Pseudorite. And just reading through everything here, I can't see anything that looks like it's inaccurate. So this is pretty much 100% accuracy here for me. As far as I can tell, you will want to read through everything and make sure it's good. But already I've saved so much time because with Dictation with Dragon, I would have had to probably spend at least 20 minutes editing this text. Maybe not that much, but at least 10 minutes editing the text probably because because it gets a lot of little things wrong. So let's try a different use case. Let's see if it will actually understand grammar and things like dialogue grammar and things like that using some fiction examples. So for this, I'm gonna create a new project. We're gonna call it Out of Shadow Chapter Two, because that's what I took this from. And we are gonna add some custom words. So we got Jack, got Gabriel, we got River, Brooke, we've got Merrick, oops, Merrick. We've got a character named Estelle and I'll go ahead and add the word gifter. It's not exactly a, I mean, it's a word that the dictation would know, but I have it capitalized because it's a specific title in this particular story. So I'm going to put that in there as well. So now this should help a lot with the accuracy of the transcription. And for the persona, we're going to try the fiction writer, see how well it does with this. And I'm going to specifically give it, let's see, I don't want enhanced description. I would rather have it be exactly as I keep it. I am going to select voice and tone maintenance to keep it unique to my specific style but like there's lots of things you could have here like adverb minimization like if you tend to naturally speak too many adverbs you can have it review and edit it as you go basically to include fewer adverbs and then we also have show don't tell here which is interesting i might experiment with this later to see how it differs but we'll just go ahead and leave it as it is you can also just select stream of consciousness editing if you don't really want to edit it too much but the only one I'm going to select for now is voice and tone maintenance. And I'm going to do the straight read through. This is the read through where I did not have any grammar dictated at all. So we're going to say straight read through. 
And while that's going, I'm gonna do another one with the same file, but I'm actually going to deselect this. I want to see what show don't tell does and does it actually improve the text very well? So we're gonna go ahead and say, create a read through show don't tell so we can compare. And then while that's going, I'm going to do one more, just like the first one, except we're going to upload a different one where I was speaking the Dragonese and asking it to do the punctuation and everything just to see what it does with that if you want to do it that way. So we'll call this Dragonese read through and create a new section. And let's look through these. So we have first the straight read through. So we have, well, now Gabriel rubbed his chin thoughtfully. You were, know there are no gifters in your village, no one to guide you. Jack looked down at feet. I know. It would mean leaving Riverbrook and accompanying me to Skycliff. I know. Actually, I didn't put Skycliff as one of the special words there, but it actually got this correct. That's interesting. I know, she repeated. Jack didn't dare meet her father's eyes in that moment, but she knew what she'd find there. Concern, disbelief, and most of all, hurt. I'm impressed that it got this colon here because I wasn't speaking the punctuation, but there is a colon in that place in my original book. The gifter spoke again. I'm going to come back to you after I finish the rest of my business here. And it's done a really good job here. One thing I've noticed However, there was one change that it made from my version of the book. If I go and look at this book, we have, well, now Gabriel rubbed his chin, right? And in prose, right, it said Gabriel rubbed his chin thoughtfully, which I would not have added. And I don't think it makes it better in this particular case. So it is pretty minimal. It's mostly sticking to what I do here, but sometimes, you know, you have to watch that. And if you don't want that at all, you can just use the minimal editing option and it won't add that at all. It's also done a really good job of adding the correct grammar to everything. It's got the quotes in the right place. I don't really see an area where it got the quotes wrong. So all in all, A plus for me. Now, if we go back and see what happened if we added the show don't tell option, as you can see, a lot more text that has been edited. This text here that is in yellow is text that has been added to. So we have Gabriel rubbed his chin thoughtfully scanning Jack's face for conviction. You know, there are no gifters in your village, he stated, his tone a mixture of intrigue and concern. No one to guide you. Jack eyes dropped her feet, the worn lever scuffing the wooden floor. I know, she murmured, though the words barely escaped her lips. It would mean leaving Riverbrook, Gabriel continued, his voice carrying the weight of her choices and accompanying me to Skycliff. Jack nodded slightly, repeating. So it's added a lot of stuff and some of it's good. Like I actually like this phrase here. Jack's eyes dropped to her feet, the worn leather scuffing the wooden floor. I think that works. But a lot of this feels a little bit AI generated to me, a little bit chat GPT. -E, like scanning Jack's face for conviction. Like the word conviction is practically an AIism right there. And so I probably wouldn't want this unless I was the kind of author who speaks a kind of skeletal version of her books. If I was the kind of author who I only do the dialogue and maybe barely mention what happens, but I flesh it out later, that's the kind of thing where this sort of addition would be helpful. Thankfully, you can easily turn this off and you don't have to use it. All right, last but not least, let's look at the Dragonese read through. This is the same scene, but I actually spoke the punctuation so we can take a look at it. Well, now Gabriel rubbed his chin. You know, there are no gifters in your village. No one to guide you. Jack looked at her feet. I know it would mean leaving Riverbrook and accompanying me to Skyfleet. I know she repeated. Jack didn't dare meet her father's eyes in that moment. And yeah, this looks about right. I don't see any punctuation that was spelled out. It actually did get the punctuation as punctuation, right? So either way it works. You can speak it without the punctuation. You can speak it with the punctuation. That could still be useful to speak the punctuation if you want to be more precise. Like I tend to when I'm dictating these days, because I got used to it back in the days when I was using dragon dictation, I do tend to say commas and periods and especially the, the phrase new line a lot because I get to the end. And I'm just like, OK, new line and it'll move on to the next line, etc. So this works. But I imagine most authors will not really want to be speaking their dialogue and everything because it can actually add a lot to, of time. In fact, if you look at the two files where where in one, I was just reading it straight. And in the other, I was reading it with the Dragonese. The Dragonese one was about 75% longer. So even though I was just reading it off the page, it still took a lot longer for me to dictate the whole thing. So you're saving even more time by not having to do the Dragonese. So there's all kinds of time saving happening here. And I imagine I'm going to be dictating a lot of my beats and certain scenes in the future, just, you know, going on walks or things like that, come back, take the file, upload it here 
Creator Pro is right and it will take care of the rest for me. And of course, these personas are really great, especially if you have a specific use case that is applicable to one or another. I'm definitely going to be taking some of like my YouTube videos or some of the Zoom calls that I have and running that through the note taker just to get a really good note taking transcription that structures things well for me. I'm definitely going to be using that. But I imagine for most of you, you're going to be using the minimalist proofreader, which just kind of goes through and looks for basic proofreading edits. And that's all it does. And it keeps everything more or less exactly as you dictated it. That's probably going to be the most useful for a lot of authors out there. Now let's talk pricing. So for most authors, the pricing that you're going to want to use is a la carte, which is $3.50 per hour. Now I know this is going to seem a little bit expensive to a number of authors out there. You can get a little bit cheaper by going higher. So if you're like powerhouse dictator, then you might want to go for this 40 hours a month plan. If you go annual, you can also get the price down a little bit more per hour. But for most of you, you're not going to be consistently dictating that much. And so going with the 350 an hour plan is probably best. And you'd be surprised at how much a single hour can go. Like I said, I dictated all of the beats for a single book in about five minutes. So that's like just a couple of cents here. But I know a lot of people are going to be talking about how expensive this is, especially compared to just using Whisper directly inside of ChatGPT or something like that. And the reason for this is because of the extra features that this adds. ProseWrite adds all of the editing features to make sure that this is accurate. It is a more accurate model than what Whisper gives you just out of the box. And so it is a fantastic tool, but because it is reviewing and editing and adding some proofreading in there, which is something that saves you quite a bit of time, that extra processing power takes a little bit more to do. And so it requires higher cost to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, as these models get cheaper and cheaper, that these costs will not come down, but they might add more hours and things to it as we go along. So that's my note on pricing. For most of you, you'll probably just go $3.5 per hour and you can just buy as many as you need in a given circumstance and then just use them up, buy more when you're out. If you are a consistent dictator, then you might want to consider like the basic or the standard plan. So this is definitely probably the tool that I will be using foreseeable future when it comes to dictation because I like saving time. People talk about how time is money. Actually, time is infinitely more valuable than money because I can get more money, but I can never get more time back. And so I'm always looking for tools that will save me time. And this is one of those. It not only saves me time by being a more accurate dictation program, but it saves me time by not having to really go through and edit the text that I dictated. So it does all of that for me. And I'm really impressed with that. I'm really excited to get to use it a lot more in the future, especially to dictate my beats. Like I can just go on a walk and dictate my beats now and then bring those into AI and write the chapter. Like it's going to be really cool going from here. So definitely check this tool out. But of course, dictating your book is not going to be really useful at all if you are dictating a poorly written book, right? You got to have a structure. You've got to have a lot of things in place before you even write your book. If you want to know more about that, I have a whole video getting into the plot structure that I recommend for authors to use. So check out that video and I will see you in the next one.